Chapter 3, Derivatives, 3.6, Chain Rule, Part 1. Your objective for this lesson is to apply the chain rule, which we've talked about a little bit in class, but not too much. Example 1, the function y equals 6x minus 10 equals 2 times 3x minus 5 is the composite of the function y equals 2u and u equals 3x minus 5. How are the derivatives of these three functions related? Okay, so let's start out by just taking the derivative of this here. So y equals 6x minus 10. So the derivative dy dx of 6x minus 10 is simply 6. Okay, so using our shortcut, like in here, uh, you know that x is going to go away. Derivative of 10 is just a 0, so we're left with 6. Okay. Now let's take the derivative of our second function here. So dy du of 2u is equal to 2. And lastly, we take du dx of 3x minus 5. We're left with 3. Okay, so how can we relate the numbers 6, 2, and 3? Well, I'm sure that you figured this out already. 6 is equal to 2 times 3. Okay, so basically we have dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Okay, so the derivative of the big composite function is equal to the derivative of 2u, where this is u, so the outside function, times the derivative of that inside function. Example 2. The polynomial y equals 9x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 1 is equal to 3x squared plus 1, the quantity squared. This is the composite of y equals u squared and u equals 3x squared plus 1. And we're going to do the same thing that we did last time, the last example, which is try to relate the, the derivatives of these functions. So let's start off by finding dy dx, which is the derivative of your first function. So dy dx of 9x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a few things here. Um, for this, I'm going to have 4 times 9x cubed. So dropping down that power to the front and then decreasing it by 1. Plus 2 times 6x to the first plus the derivative of 1 is 0. So this becomes 36x cubed plus 12x. Okay. Now let's find the derivative of u squared. So du dx of u squared is simply 2u and Now we're going to find the derivative of this 
function here, so the first part of our composite. This is dy du of u squared. This is equal to 2u. Okay. And the second part of our composite, we have du dx of 3x squared plus 1. This is 6x. Okay. Well, it's harder to compare these because you see I have a u here and an x here. As opposed to above, I just have an x. So what I want to do is fix this so that it is an x. So let's ask ourselves, what is u? Okay, and you see right here, u equals 3x squared plus 1. So let's plug that in. So this is 2 times 3x squared plus 1 which simplifies to 6x squared plus 2. Okay. How can I get this from these two? Hmm. Adding it's not going to do the trick. But I do know that 6 times 6 is 36. So let's try multiplying. So 6x squared plus 2 times 6x. And I need to distribute this. So we get 36x squared plus 12x. Okay. And that is exactly what I have up here. Okay. So now I know that these are equal. Which means that dy dx, which is that first derivative I found, was equal to dy du times du dx. This brings us to the chain rule. The chain rule is another extremely important part of calculus. I know you're hearing this a lot. Chain rule is very important. If f is differentiable at the point u equals g of x, and g is differentiable at x, then the composite function f of g of x, which is f of g of x, is differentiable at x. And f of g prime of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So another notation for this that you might see is what we had on the previous slide, okay? Let's apply this in example three. An object moves along the x-axis so that its position at any time t is greater than or equal to zero is given by x of t equals cosine of t squared plus one. Find the velocity of the object as a function of t. Okay. Let's start with what we already know. So we have a position function right here. We're trying to find velocity. You know that the first derivative of position gives you velocity. So we can say then that dx dt will be our velocity. We can also establish from this, let me rewrite it down here. So x of t equals cosine of t squared plus 1. We have a function within a function. So this is our u and the cosine is x. Okay. So x equals cosine u, and u equals t squared plus 1. Okay. And we're trying to find, well, we know dx dt 
is equal to dx du times du dt. Okay, so we need to find each of these pieces. So dx du, we're going to use x equals cosine u. So we're trying to find the derivative of cosine u, and this is negative sine u. du dt, what am I writing it to? du dt, we're using our u right here, so of t squared plus 1 equals 2t. Okay. Now, so dx dt, if we plug these things in here, is equal to negative sine of u times 2t. So again, we're asking the question, what does u equal? Well, u is t squared plus 1, so let's put that in for u. So negative sine of t squared plus 1 times 2t. And the last thing I want to do here is write this a little bit more standard. All I'm going to do is bring this up to the front. So dx dt is equal to negative 2 sine of t squared plus 1. I know that this looks extremely confusing right now, um, but hopefully this next slide will help you a little bit, and as you work with it, it will get better. Okay, so think of this as the outside-inside rule. So if y equals f of g of x, then the derivative dy dx is f prime of g of x times g prime of x which means that you're differentiating the outside, which is f, outside function f, and evaluating at the inside, um, left alone. So you're differentiating the outside, leaving the inside alone. And then you're multiplying it by the derivative of the inside function. So outside then inside, you'll see what this means right now. Example four. Differentiate sine of x squared plus x with respect to x. So let's look at this right here. I can see very clearly that this is the inside because it's inside the parentheses, which makes my sine the outside. So it goes around it. So to find the derivative, d dx of sine of x squared plus x. First, I'm going to find the derivative of the outside. What's the derivative of sine x? Well, it's cosine x, except I don't have an x. I have an x squared plus 2. That part you probably would have gotten already. Um, but this isn't the entire derivative, there's a second part. So once you've done this part, you need to go back and look at the inside and say, what's the derivative of x squared plus x? Well, that's just 2x plus 1. So I'm going to take this piece and multiply it by 2x plus 1. Okay? And that is the derivative. That would be the entire derivative. 
Not so bad. Example five, this one's a little bit trickier. Find the derivative of g of t equals tan of five minus sine two t. And the reason why this is a little trickier, you see our outside layer, we have tan u, so tan of this, it's layer one. And then you see this inside layer, five minus sine two t, but then there's the 2t inside of sine. So it's not just an x, it's 2t. So we need to take care of all three layers. But you can do it, it's not that bad. So g prime of t equals the derivative of tan is secant squared whatever is inside. So 5 minus sine 2t. We're going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. So times d dt of 5 minus sine 2t. Okay. So this stays the same, secant squared 5 minus sine 2t times the derivative of the inside here, well the derivative of 5 is 0, minus cosine 2t times the derivative of that inside bit. So I shouldn't have drawn that yet. Times d d t of 2 t. Okay. So secant squared 5 minus sine 2 t. That zero we don't really need. So times negative cosine 2 t times the derivative of 2t is just 2. Okay. And basically all that's left to do here is multiply some stuff, but if you look here I have one, two, three, four different numbers getting multiplied. I'm just going to rearrange them so that they're in an order that I like a little bit better. Um, this negative, I could move, it's really a negative one. So I could say it's negative one times two and I'm gonna do that. So this is negative two times, we have cosine of two t times secant squared of 5 minus sine 2t and oh gosh I said a minute ago that this was its own factor but that is not true so this here is one number please disregard what I said before don't just look at the parentheses when you're trying to figure out your factors so secant of secant squared of 5 minus sine 2t is one number so I have one two three numbers here and this is our giant derivative. Okay, so chain rule you can apply over and over and over again. You have to apply it to each layer of your composite functions. So three times here. But that is 3.6 part one.